Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we're going through some Bash Shell scripting using for loops. We'll go through a few examples using for loops so we can understand how they work and some special cases with for loops. For loops are a great thing to use if you want to go over iterations where the same type of code needs to be executed repeatedly. If you need help setting up a new shell script, make sure to check out the first video in the series where we talk about what Bash Shell scripting is and how to create and run your first script. All right, and let's get into things here. I'm gonna launch my terminal, and I'm here in my documents directory where I've been creating my scripts. As you can see, we have all the scripts that we've created in the past, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new script. So I'm gonna use nano, and I'm gonna call it for loops and then just .sh at the end, and I'm gonna open that up. First thing I need to put in here is the special line that allows us to use bash, and that's where the location of bash is, so user bin bash for me. All right, now we can begin scripting our first for loop. If you're new and stopping by to watch a scripting video today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. All right, the first type of for loop that we wanna talk about is if you type for, and then right after that, I'll create a new line, do, and to end things, I'm just gonna do done. So this is the basic skeleton for a for loop. We have for, we're gonna make some condition here, do, which tells us, hey, in between do and done, these are the statements that we want to run. All right, up in the for line, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in i, and that's a variable that I'm defining right now in the for loop that's going to be used for my iteration. So I have i and then I'll type in and after the in you can define what range of numbers you want to run the loop through. So you can just type one, two, three and that's just going to iterate i three times. So we'll put a statement in here and just to confirm it does and I'll echo out what i is displaying current uh, number and we'll just say i and that should be good enough for us. What I would expect is to go through this loop three times and spit out one, two, and three. And that's because every time through the loop, the i variable will get incremented. And that's based on how many times you told it to get incremented. So I have three times over here. So let's give this a shot. I'm gonna write this out, control X. Yes, I wanna save, and then I wanna run it. But before I run it, I have to change permissions so we can run it. So we're calling that for loops. So I have to do chmod plus x for loops on the .sh file. And now we should be able to run it. If we run it, you can see here that we got current number one, current number two, and current number three. Awesome, just like we expected. So let's go back in and make a change. So now you know how to use a basic for loop here, but what if we don't wanna write out all the numbers? I mean, this could get a little bit tedious if you had to do four, five, six, seven, so on, so forth until you've reached some number n. Well, there's a little bit of a shortcut here. So I'm just gonna keep this as one, two, three and show you a little bit easier way to do this. So we can redefine i because it only exists in this little scope here. So let's reuse it, why not? We'll do for i in. And then if I put some braces around, I can actually do one dot dot to some number n here. And that's the same thing as doing this above, but we have to specify, of course, that number. So if I wanna go from one to three, I have to do it like this, one dot dot three. We'll still need our magic do and done, so the for loop knows where our statements exist. So here we go, I'm gonna do echo, I'm gonna do current number dollar sign i, and then I'm gonna say in for loop example two. And let's give this a shot as well. I'm gonna save and exit and rerun. And you can see that it's exactly the same. It ran three times, just like the one above, and you can see this is our second example. Going back in, if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. So now you know that there's two ways to go about using the for loops and iterating over. So just know that a for loop consists of defining a variable and how many iterations you want to make through a loop. So like we said, definition of a variable and how many times we wanna go through the loop. Of course, you can change the three to any number so if we wanted to go ahead and execute this maybe 50 times, we can just put 50 here. If we save and exit and try this out real quick, you can see that we got it 50 times because you see current number 50. All right, back in here. You can also start with zero. It all depends on how you want to iterate over stuff. So this will actually, if I made this zero, it'd give you 51 numbers instead of 50. All right, I'll show you another way and my favorite way to actually define a for loop. So you can do something much like the C style formatting of a for loop and the difference here is going to be instead of writing your variable in 
and then your range, we're gonna go ahead and put parentheses around our, our expressions here. And I'm gonna do I again, but I'm gonna put a semicolon and then I'm gonna do some type of condition. So while I is less than, let's say 10. And finally, one last statement telling the for loop what we wanna do with I. And this is a special operator here, plus plus, which allows us to increment I by one. So every time through the for loop, we're just gonna increment I by one. And this should be very similar to what we have up top. So in order to confirm that, let's go ahead and change this back to three and actually make this less than or equal to three and we'll make I equal to one. So this says we define our variable, our variable is equal to one. We're searching for that variable every time and making sure that it's less than or equal to three. Otherwise we won't do anything inside this for loop. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and increment the for loop if this statement over here is true. Otherwise, break out of the for loop. All right, and if everything works out, it should print out much like the top two for loops, but let's do echo current number and I again in for loop example three. All right, and we'll save and exit and rerun. And you can see we got current number one, two, three, and then again, one, two, three, and again, one, two, three, example two, example three. So now you know three ways of using for loops inside of bash shell scripting. All right, so this for loop of course contains three statements. One is to define a variable and you can set it equal to something if you want to start from somewhere else besides zero. Two, to define a condition to break on. So in this one, as soon as we reach three, we break out of the for loop. And three, to define the iteration type. Whether you want to use different types of iterations, you can in there. So that's really it as far as it goes for for loops. There are some special examples. Uh, there's another one that you can do and this is a step for loop. So we can use what we had before, so the for i in. Let's do one through 10 in steps of two. And we'll do this by echoing out number equal to i, just to spit out some number so we can see what's happening as the for loop's going over. And what we should expect here is going from one to 10 in steps of two. So let's give it a shot. We went from one, skip two, went to three, skip four, went to five, skip six, went to seven, and skipped eight, went to nine. So as you can tell, this is an easy way to do things in steps. If you need it, just something to know. Another special case I wanna talk about is what if you wanna do an infinite loop? Well, you can do this by just typing in semicolons and putting nothing in. So the only way to get out of the infinite loop is to control and C. So we'll just give a hint here. And let's go ahead and give this a shot. And we're running, and you can see Control C keeps getting spammed, but I can't type or do anything else. Instead, I have to hit Control C, and then I exit out of that infinite for loop. All Control C does is kills the execution of the script. Let's go back in and let me show you two more things. And I'll just use this example in order to show you those two things. So let's say you wanted to get out of a for loop early. Well, if you had some condition, maybe with an if statement, you can always say break. And what that does is as soon as it gets to this line break, it's going to break out of this for loop as long as it's defined within the scope of the for loop. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. What I expect is if we go through the for loop the first time, we're gonna echo out one and then break out of it and see nothing else. And the one other thing I wanna make sure before I go out of here, is I need to get rid of this right here for now because I don't want to be in an infinite loop. All right, and back to here, add that break back in. All right, let's give this a shot. And as you can tell, we only got number equal to one. Let's go back in. So that's all a break does. It just breaks out of the for loop whenever you decide to use it. There's another special case, which is the continue case. So what continue does, instead of breaking out of the for loop, it just goes to the next iteration. So with this being here, it will actually increment through the entire for loop, but it won't display number equal to where, whatever iteration we're in. And we'll just do the current iteration instead of number equals current iteration. Let's see if we ever see number equal to the current iteration. All right, and running it, you can see that you just see the number and you never see the number equal to. Well, if we go back, that's exactly what we told this for loop to do because we said, go ahead and echo the iteration, but then continue, meaning skip over anything below this and just continue on to the next iteration. That's really it. And I hope you enjoyed this bash shell scripting tutorial on how to use for loops 
Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.